everyone, and welcome to Cellular Healing TV. I'm your host, Meredith Dykstra, and this is episode number 171. We have our resident cellular healing specialist, Dr. Dan Pompa, on the line, of course, and today we welcome very special guest, Dr. Bradley Nelson. Have a very exciting topic for you guys today. We're going to dig all dig into emotional health and emotional detox and his book, The Emotion Code. So, I have some really, really exciting things to bring to you guys today. Before we get started, let me tell you a little bit about Dr. Bradley. Dr. Bradley Nelson is a holistic chiropractic physician, a medical intuitive, and one of the world's foremost experts in the emerging field of bioenergetic medicine and energy psychology. His best selling book, The Emotion Code, is helping people all over the world to improve their lives easily and quickly. Users of the Emotion Code have found freedom from emotional problems such as depression and anxiety, as well as physical problems including fatigue, pain, and disease. A key element of the Emotion Code is removing emotional energies that have clustered around the heart, interfering with one's ability to find love and success. Dr. Nelson has coined this cluster of emotions, the heart wall, and it has been called the most important discovery in the history of energy medicine. He's trained thousands of practitioners worldwide to help people overcome unresolved anger, depression, anxiety, loneliness, and other negative emotions and the physical symptoms associated with them. Download a free copy of the Emotion Code in both audio and PDF versions, including step-by-step -step instructions uh, for working with the body's healing power at the emotion or emotioncodegift.com. This is an amazing free offer. And uh, welcome, Dr. Nelson, to Cellular Healing TV. We're so excited to have you on the show. Well, thank you both so much for having me on. I'm excited to be here. Yeah. Well, listen, Doc, I, I'm going to start with a confession right up front, you know, because every, my viewers and listeners know that, you know, I can, I can be brutally honest and always am, right? And, and to the point of embarrassment is what I'm saying. But all right. So I, my son told me, you've got to read this book, The Emotion Code, right? And I said, you know, I looked at it and I was, I was interested, but I was very, very skeptical, right? Now, you have to understand, you know, my, I have a very scientific way that my mind works and I'm a guy that, you know, prove it to me and then I'll believe it. That works for me in life and against me, <laughs> okay? So anyways, um, I, I really went into it skeptical. And, you know, as I, I read the book, I became more and more intrigued. And my 18-year-old son who's sitting right here and he's going to be jumping in on this interview, trust me. You know, he started literally learning the stuff and doing it. And he came with some things with me that did, in fact, make a lot of sense. One was, you know, worth the feeling of worthlessness. That's a trapped emotion that I would be like, well, I don't feel that way. However, it was trapped. And I'm going to let you explain that more. But bottom line is I had dyslexia. Many of you watching this know, and I couldn't literally read till I was in sixth grade. I said, that must be it because he tested me and you'll explain that too. And he found it was from that time. And matter of fact, even further back, he found it was from my mother. And this trapped emotion was in the first uh, trimester, which I said, well, then it could have been the dyslexia. Learning later that dyslexia can be a trigger gene that gets turned on in the first trimester. And it was you know, from my mother. So I say all that to say that two other people did this on me and found the exact same thing. So needless to say, you know, although I am skeptic at heart and how the testing, you know, how this works, I'm gonna have you explain it because I'm gonna be honest, man, it seems a little hokey, right? Even from a distance, you know, you're testing people and going, oh, you have this trapped emotion. And then we release these emotions and all of a sudden physical ailments go away. So there lied my skepticism. However, there also in lied something that kept me intrigued to keep going. So, Doc, first off, answer this. What the heck is this emotion code? <laughs> and, you know, trapped emotions, I'm a believer that trapped chemicals and emotions do the exact same thing in the body. I know that for certain. I know that a lot of my clients who are very, very sick have trapped emotions. And I know that will keep them from getting well. So this is a very important show uh, because I know so many listening have problems, suffering for a long time, and it could be in fact, a trapped emotion. So what is it and how do you get involved in this? Okay, absolutely. Well, um, <clears throat> first of all, let me, let me back up just, just a little bit. Um, well, actually, let me back up a long way. I was seven years old and um, I was really sick with the measles and I was, I was miraculously healed within just an instant. 
as my father was praying for me. And I remember every detail about that day and every detail about that event. And what that taught me is that at that young age, there's a higher power that we don't see that we can draw upon, we can ask for help, and it's there. So about seven years later, things run in you know, seven year cycles, I guess, um, I ended up with uh, kidney disease and there was no cure medically for, for me. And so my parents took me to see some old time uh, holistic doctors who actually healed me. So that's when I decided I wanted to go uh, into the healing arts myself. I got distracted from that as years went by, I became a computer programmer. And, uh, and then um, something brought me back to it. And uh, it was an, really a direct answer to prayer for me to go back into the healing arts. So when I went into practice, um, I got into this habit of asking for help from up above with each person that I saw. And it was a totally private, totally personal thing. Nobody ever knew that I was doing that. I do, I do the same thing with everyone. I do the exact same thing. Yeah, beautiful thing. I mean, and, and um, it's a great habit. And so as time went on, I learned more and more about what was really going on with people. And what I found was really astonishing to me that no matter what people were suffering from, whether it was physical pain or infertility or asthma or digestive disorders or uh, depression or anxiety or phobias or panic attacks or PTSD, whatever it was, no matter how old or young a person was, what they had in common was they had emotional baggage. During the last 10 years that I was in practice, I was primarily seeing people that had been told there was no cure for them at all in Western medicine, and the vast majority of them were able to get well, but what I found was, again, their emotional baggage was a huge component. Yeah. And what we have found, believe it or not, is that 90% of all the physical pain that people have is actually being caused by emotional baggage. And the way that I look at it now is that the human body, uh, if you think of your car, if your check engine light comes on, it means something's wrong. Well, we have a lot of different kinds of check engine lights in our body. Uh, one of the very common ones is pain that can occur anywhere. But it's an amazing thing. It's also amazing how it can also be done at a distance. And we've certified about 3,200 people now in 64 countries. And most of them do this work at a distance and get Im immediate uh, amazing results with other people. So it's an incredible thing. But to understand it, um, for your listeners, it helps to, to first of all, Think about the body itself and what is the body. If you look at your hand, it looks solid, but of course, if you magnify it a million times, you're looking face to face with a single individual atom. And if you look inside the atom, you see there's really nothing in there but empty space and some little infinitesimally tiny energies that are zipping around at the speed of light. And so really, that's what we are. Everything yeah. is energy. Chemicals, ultimately, they're energy. Emotions are energy as well. So when you're feeling an intense emotion, what we believe is that every emotion has its own specific frequency and, uh, and vibration. And if you're feeling an emotion of anger, that's a different emotion, a different frequency than frustration, and that's different from grief. They're all different. But if you're feeling an emotion powerfully enough, your whole being can take on this vibrational energy. And in those circumstances sometimes, uh, when that event is over, when the bully moves away or the divorce is over or the funeral's over, whatever it is, um, sometimes some of that energy stays behind in the form of what we call a trapped emotion, which is really just another name for emotional baggage. And, you know, we say things like, oh, you know, that Meredith, she's got a lot of emotional baggage, right, Meredith? Oh, yeah, tons. <laughs> we say things like that about other people, right? Yeah. Not realizing that there, there's a profound truth there. And the reality of it is we all have emotional baggage. And what we're finding is that, the emotional baggage that we're dragging through our lives is diminishing our lives and it's distorting our futures from where we really would like to go. And the, the interesting thing about it is um, it's not just the emotional baggage that we've picked up in our own lifetimes. Sometimes it's something we picked up in the womb, like in your case, first trimester, right? Sometimes it's, uh, it's inherited emotional energy that we pick up at conception from mom or dad that might go back 10 or 20 generations. Yeah. And we're being affected by all those energies. And so the emotion code is just this simple way to find these and get rid of these. That's it. right. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's remarkable. Uh, you know, I, I deal with very, very sick and challenged people. I've learned to kind of ask questions 
because if I felt, feel like their traumas emotionally are too much, I feel like those are the people that are very difficult to help, right? Um, because I'm not proficient in your, in your process, right? But uh, point being, if I was, I'd be able to you know, even make uh, headway there. But I take on the ones who are more chemically, had chemical traumas in their life, and you know, the, the chemicals are driving inflammation of their cells, dysfunction, et cetera. And we remove that stressor and the body does the healing. You know, this is barely the same thing. I mean, the cells, the DNA, it turns on genes. It holds, the cells hold this in the DNA. And your method, you know, is getting rid of it. Okay, I have to ask the obvious question, I think, is, is how did you discover this method? I mean, I, I think that most people watching would real agree that trapped emotions can cause sickness and disease. And, um, but, I mean, how did you figure this out, the, this way of relieving the trapped emotions? And describe it. Well, you know, um, when I when I first went into practice, uh, there, of course, you know, the understanding that there are um, that the body produces emotions. Uh, it was an ancient understanding that the Chinese came up with that the organs in the body produce the emotional energies and those frequencies. And so, uh, this is something I think that's been known and understood for a long time. When I first went into practice, the doctor that I worked with did kind of a primitive form of of emotional releasing. And as time went on, um, you know, I had lots of people to work on because I had this practice, you know, and you're familiar with that, how it's, and they call it practice for a reason. You have lots of people to practice on. And as time went on, there was just more information, little understandings would come. You know, it wasn't all of a sudden. It, it took many years to figure all of this stuff out. And I think that there's really nothing new under the sun. I think that... Um, all this understanding has been built on what the ancients discovered about the emotions and so on. So um, it was a matter of gradually putting it all together. The chart, for example, that we use um, is really easy. There's two columns and six rows and 60 emotions. The chart I used to use maybe 20 years ago was twice that big. But um, as time went on, I've been able to kind of condense this down into this uh, this really simple method. And this method relies, by the way, completely on the intelligence of the subconscious mind, you see. Because consciously, if you're sick uh, or, you know, you've got some kind of malfunction going on in your life or your body, consciously you don't know why that's happening. You know, the conscious mind knows very, very little. It's like a tiny little room in this huge mansion of our intelligence. But the subconscious mind is the part of us that's so smart it can take a ham sandwich and can convert that over, over into new cardiac muscle cells or nerve cells or whatever it needs to, which is really, if you think about it, a level of intelligence beyond our ability to really even begin to comprehend. Yeah, so that's just for, for our, I think this is a really important point, so I, I don't want to skip over because we have a lot of doctors uh, watch this show, but we have most people are just lay people, right? So two parts of the mind. Conscious mind is making a conscious decision. I'm going to pick this up. <laughs> I'm going to get on my phone. However, the subconscious is what's running your heart. You don't have to think about it. Your subconscious or unconscious mind is, you know, doing all these amazing things, you know, killing bad cells, making new cells. Um, but it goes even beyond that. I've heard and I've read and studied that the unconscious mind is constantly, it's recording everything that happens. Every memory from the time in utero until now is actually recorded in the subconscious mind. Is that true? Yeah. And they've actually done studies that have proven that. And um, what we believe is that every, everything you've ever done, every face you've ever seen in a crowd, everything you've ever eaten or tasted or touched or smelled, the whole history of your health or disease, it's all in there in the subconscious mind. And it is this ultimate um, holographic computer really and being an old computer programmer it helped me to conceptualize um that the subconscious is a computer and we can ask questions and we can get answers and that's how the emotion code works and we use different methods of muscle testing which are just forms of biofeedback uh to ask questions and get answers and the subconscious mind will give you those answers and the beauty the beautiful thing about that is we can find things known only to the subconscious, uh, for example, if you have an emotion that was inherited at conception, well, you have no idea about that consciously. Your subconscious mind will know everything about that. Um, 
you know, how, how many generations back that goes, if it was, you know, from your mother's father's father's mother. I mean, it's incredible. And so we totally rely on the subconscious computer system to get the answers. But the beautiful thing about that, you know, is that um, it's so simple. Let me tell you a story. Years ago, there was a woman who came to see me. She thought she was having a heart attack. And uh, she had crushing chest pain, difficulty breathing, left side of her face was numb, her left arm was totally numb. And I told my staff, we might need an ambulance, but ho hang on a second. I did some quick testing on her and found she had a trapped emotion that was creating these symptoms. And the emotion, using muscle testing, I was able to find out very quickly that this had occurred three years before. The emotion was grief, three years before. She burst into tears. And she said, I can't believe that's affecting me now. I thought I dealt with all that. And I said, what happened to you? She said three years before her husband had an affair and it destroyed her marriage, destroyed her life for a while. She spent a year in therapy. She'd even recently gotten remarried. So as far as she was concerned, that ex-husband was just a jerk and he was ancient history. But as far as her body was concerned, it was like it had just happened. And I released that emotional baggage, that trapped emotion. And the feeling came back into her arm and her face about within about three seconds, you know, just whoosh. And the pain was gone, the difficulty breathing. I'm still in touch with her. Um, that was probably 27 or 28 years ago. And I think she would have been one of these people who probably would have died of a broken heart that we talk about, you know, the medical profession talks about that. So, um, wow. the baggage that we have, we I, often, I, and I, I, I just think, you know, think of this, this story and I, I told you this off air, right? You know, despite my skepticism, my, my son, Isaac's a lot like me. He's my 16 year old. Right. And he was doing the. Um, he, he literally learned on the, his brothers, right, and, and me, right, and he got better and better at it. And then, you know, so he was having trouble with his knee. Was good slaughter. He's a ski racer, and so Daniel said that might be a trapped emotion, right? So he started working on him. And, ah, yeah, Isaac's making fun of him, honestly, right? You know, oh, everything's a trapped emotion, right? <laughs> it goes on. So he says, okay, it, you know, here was the emotions. I released it. Your knee's going to be fine. So. In no, in no time, the knee has been fine, right? So he hasn't had any pain. So now he's a believer. He's like, okay, I have to believe it, Dad, because, you know, my knee, we tried everything. We had him going to the best chiropractors, therapists, right? We did it all. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, releasing trapped emotions took away Isaac's uh, knee pain. So, you know, I mean, I, I think it's, it's just amazing. Now, Daniel did something on me uh, about heart walls. So mm -hmm. he said, Dad, I think you might have a... Uh, basically a trapped emotion or a heart wall that's right. keeping things in. Explain that because that's a big deal. At least, you know, according, you know, I learned more from it, I think, from Daniel, but your book talks about it as well. Well, it is a really big deal. And um, what it really has to do with, if you think about the human heart, you know, what we're taught in school in the West is that the heart is just a pump. It's, it's, uh, it's just a muscle. That's all it is. But anciently, they believed the heart was the seed of the soul and the source of love and creativity and really the core of our being. Well, back in the 60s, when doctors started doing heart transplants, it didn't take long before people were coming back to the doctors saying strange things like, my taste in music or sports or food has totally changed. My handwriting has totally changed. I've got memories of places I, I know that I've never been to in my life. And when they would go back to the family of the donor, in every case, they'd find well, that's my son's handwriting that you have now. Or yes, our daughter loved baseball and now you do, you know, in every case. And there are whole books written about this. Well, what happened was a number of years ago, um, my wife had a dream. And as I was trying to help her decipher this dream, I suddenly had what I can only describe to you as a waking vision where I saw this beautiful hardwood floor. It lasted for three or four minutes. And as I'm, under, as, as I'm seeing this, I have this understanding that my wife's heart is underneath the floor. I have no idea what this means. It took us a while. We prayed, asked for help, figured it out eventually that um, she was born into a very volatile family. And at about age two, she started um, putting a wall around her heart to protect her heart from being totally broken. Her father was a rageaholic, very dysfunctional. And so this is a, a very common thing. 93% of people have this phenomenon going on, this heart wall. And what it is essentially is it's, it's a wall that the subconscious mind puts up. Uh, it's made of layers of your emotional baggage. And some of those layers could be inherited. Um, but it's pretty easy to take down. Uh, we teach how to do it in the emotion code. But it's, it's amazing what can happen when this wall is taken down. Because really, I believe the ancients were totally right. 
uh, the heart really truly is the core of our being and the source of love and creativity and so on. And what we find, they've actually done studies where they find that the heart puts out a magnetic field about 12 feet in diameter. If you're feeling love or affection for another person, your heartbeat is gonna appear in their brain waves and become measurable magnetically. So there's this amazing thing going on with the heart that we haven't really given the heart credit for, but 93% of people we find have this wall. And when that wall is taken down, sometimes the most amazing things happen. People fall in love who never ever thought they would. Uh, people start having creative ideas flowing to them because that's where the best creative ideas are. You know, follow your heart is great advice, but if you've got a heart wall, it's much, much more difficult. So it's all in the Emotion Code book, um, how to find out if you've got a heart wall, how to get rid of it, and it can really just transform uh, your whole life. It really can. Um, mm. So many of the practitioners that, uh, or people that become practitioners for us, have had an experience with that, where that wall's taken down and suddenly they feel like a different person. People have told us that for the first time in their life when that wall's taken down, they can actually feel the connection with the higher power, they can feel God's love for them. Um, they, uh, they're able to get over, oftentimes within days, serious suicidal depression, uh, yeah. anxiety, phobias, all those kinds of things. I have a question. Yeah, here's a question. I want him to share his experience too. I have a question more about spiritual aspects because okay. you can inherit past generations' emotions, right? Uh, right. Trapped emotions. Yes. So, can there be blocks to spiritual, like my connection with Jesus? Can that be blocked that I actually cannot be born again until those blocks are removed? Well, it can okay. definitely interfere. Like yeah, it can interfere with your connection with the higher power because I think what we believe, and from, from observing people uh, since 1998 when we discovered this, from observing what happens to people and how it changes their spiritual life and their connection to God, um, I think that, that when God is communicating to us and sending, and, or great spirit, higher power, source energy, whatever you want to call it, I think that that connection is really a heart connection. The brain up here, I think, is just kind of the, it's the hardware, but I believe the heart truly is the seat of the subconscious mind, and it really truly is the core of our being. The ancients, I think, were really right about it. So getting rid of baggage that's surrounding your heart can only help, and we've seen many cases where it's just totally transformed people. You know, um, I, my answer to that question is, you know, I, I'm gonna say, look, I think Christ is enough. However, I would agree you know, meaning that I think he can break through anything, uh, you know, any time, any heart wall. However, I will agree, in my opinion, that it will, you see people who are, you know, believers or, you know, believe, you know, but they struggle. And that, that would absolutely still create, just like a chemical would, right. create problems in that relationship, in growing, in, you know. So, you know, I, I would agree with that. Tell them your experience with you know i mean you broke down heart walls and i want you know people to understand daniel read the book he never muscle tested in his life he never heard of a trapped emotion he never did anything like this okay he's done a lot of my work you know which uh, you know transformed yeah. his life but he didn't do nothing he's doing this now so i'm using that to encourage he's yeah doing, i think i think i got so many results in particular because i did all of the other health things so my body was very ready to get rid of these trapped emotions because my life was in relative good order. So once yeah. I started releasing trapped emotions, all these physical things, in, oh, most uh, noticeably yeah. were the physical. Um, so for instance, my candida, um, I had really bad candida, couldn't figure it out, was doing all the killers, was doing it constantly for years, not working, all the good bacteria, not working. And then as soon as I started releasing the trapped emotion, asking directly, do I have trapped emotion related to my candida? Yes, okay. And just kept going at it like that and um, eventually my candida stopped acting up so um, what else my scapula and the elongation of uh, he was my wow. collarbones I was hunched over like this all trapped emotions yeah so, I mean, I, it was also body code work which I'm sure you'll get to that all went into that um, and that relates to yeah, he also had an injury I mean he had some other things right, right? That, I had an injury yeah. like Isaac the Osgood uh -huh. slaughter that uh -huh. never um, went away in my ankles found out trapped emotion. So it was, uh, unfortunately after I quit ski, ski racing. But. Yeah. No. Yeah. So I, I, you know, I want to before, and I, I want you to direct the rest of this, but I, you know, run and get that little magnet. I want to show people, cause I know what people are thinking right now. I know it. Even merit, this thing is, I always can read merit. 
okay, what do they mean? What are they actually doing? I know that's what people are thinking because we've been talking, you know, out here. I actually, I mean, you could do it on me, Daniel, or Meredith. I, you know, I'm open to it, and there's no embarrassment for me. Whatever emotion, trap the emotion comes out with, I'm good with. Um, but go get the little magazine. Yeah. I want to show how I wanted people to see an example of what you're doing and sure. how you're doing it. Okay, and then I think that uh, we'll get people interested. In this. And listen, while he's giving that, I encourage everyone to get get the book. And obviously, there was a free download. Uh, that Meredith. So Meredith, remind them where to get the, the download. I'm sure they can buy emotion code on the uh, on Amazon as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And the free download is emotioncodegift.com. Yeah. Right. And the and the beauty of uh, going to emotioncodegift.com is you get the book as a PDF. It's the full book, but you also get um, I believe it's ten downloads, ten audio, ten MP3 downloads. So you have the whole book on audio. Mm -hmm. So in fact, let me tell you a story really quickly. Uh, I was talking to a woman not too long ago who was telling me about uh, how she got the book. Uh, she went to emotioncodegift.com, downloaded the book, started listening to it. Her son started reading it and listening to it, and he started practicing with his friends, and she didn't pay much attention. But a couple of weeks later, the phone rang, and uh, the woman on the other end of the line identified herself as the mother of one of her son's friends. She said, listen, your son's been doing this emotion thing. I didn't pay much attention, but she said, I have to tell you something. She said, my son has had a severe phobia of water all of his life. We've tried everything. We've taken him to everybody that we can think of. Nothing has ever worked. We've given up on this. And it's really altered our life and his life. And we thought he'd have this forever. But she said, right now, I'm at the community pool. She said, my son is out in the water playing with the other boys. She said, this is the first time in his life he's been able to do this. She said, your son did this to him. How is this even possible? What in the world is he doing? And those two boys are only 11 years old, see? So... So that's how powerful this can be. And one of the neat things about it that I can show you right now is how this works remotely. Now, yeah. I, now what's really fun to do is, um, and it's easy to demonstrate if somebody, if we have any of you that are in pain at all in any way, and probably none of you are, but. No, and, you know, but my, I have this chronic sacrum thing, right? Oh yeah. It goes and was really, you know, and I have to say, Daniel did some motion work on me and it, it, it made a difference. And now I had an emotional thing when I was in New York, it was a very emotional thing. And then I started feeling it. So I know there's some more there, there's some more there right? So maybe it'll come up. I don't have that pain right now. However, it, it is absolutely attached to emotional things. Okay, absolutely. How about you, Meredith? You got anything hurting? Well, uh, a few days ago, I, I think I kind of slept wrong on my neck. So I had a little bit of pain in my, my neck and back. It's not dramatic, but it's slight. Would that work? Yeah. Well, let's let's uh, let's try that on a zero to ten scale. What's hurting the most, and how much? What, what kind of number would you put on it? Um, I'd say I'm just a little bit in my neck, maybe a three. Okay, three. We can go with that. And then, um, and then, Daniel, maybe we'll, you know, maybe we'll work on you next. And I, I yeah. have I have the magnet here too. If you want Daniel to do anything with that, the North Pole. <laughs> no worries. All right, so, so let's take a look. Now, the first thing that we like to do, okay, and what we teach people is that before you start doing this work, what you want to do is you want to make a connection with that higher power, whatever you believe that higher power to be, you know, uh, great spirit, source energy, whatever. Ask for some help because the highest duty of the healer, I believe, is to act as a go-between for that higher power. So give me just a second here. I'll ask for some help for us. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to do some muscle testing. And in the book, we teach you a number of different methods. And Daniel, uh, this is probably maybe one of the ones that you use. This one we call this the ring and ring method. I just do like this, and then I resist this way. Oh, but that's different. So you, you've invented a new one. A little different. <laughs> that's <It> great. <laughs> okay, so I'm uh, first of all, the human body has this amazing ability built right into it to set aside its own needs to act on behalf of someone else. And that's what I'm gonna do right now with Meredith. So let's just ask, that's probably already, it's probably already happened. I can ask, uh, can I act as proxy for you, Meredith? Are we connected energetically? And I get a yes answer. So in other words, when I'm testing like this, if it's strong, the fingers will stay together. If it's weak and the answer is no, the fingers will break apart. So that's what you'll see. Strong for yes, stays together, breaks apart for no, and that's weak. So, all right, you ready, Meredith? Let's ask a question here. Let's ask, do you have a trapped emotion we can release that's contributing to the pain that you have up there in your neck? And the answer is yes. 
Now that, that answer is coming from her subconscious mind, but it's manifesting through my subconscious mind. We're all connected. And so what we have here is a chart of emotions, right? Hopefully this is in English. It is. So um, we have uh, six columns or sorry, two columns and six rows of emotions. So what I'm going to do here, you see right now, here's what's happening. Her subconscious mind is saying, yes, this pain that I have, there is an emotional component to this. And this, the actual emotion itself is known to her subconscious mind. It's not known to her conscious mind or my conscious mind, but our subconscious minds are connected. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask some questions. All right. Is this trapped emotion listed in our chart here in column A? And the answer is weak. That's a no. So that means it's in column B. So is it in one of the odd rows in column B? That's row one or three or five, right? And her subconscious mind says no. That means we've narrowed it down to 15 emotions. It's got to be in uh, one of the odd row, or one of the even rows here. Is it in row two, row four? It's in row four, column B. All right, row four, column B. So if you can see that, the emotions are depression, frustration, indecisiveness, panic, or taken for granted. Those are all really fun emotions, right, Meredith? Oh, so fun. <laughs> okay, so here we go. Is the emotion depression? No. Is it frustration? No. Indecisiveness? No. Is it panic? No. Is it taken for granted? Actually, no. Now, when we're doing the emotion code, if you're taken to a certain column in a certain row and the answers are all negative, it means that the emotional energy was inherited at conception. That's usually how we find these. So oh, I'm gonna use a paper here, and I'm just going to take some notes because because I don't know how far back this thing goes, but let's let's find out. All right, let's see here. All right. So is this emotion uh, inherited? And the answer is yes. Okay. So is it inherited? Uh, let's see where we are here. Is it inherited depression? No. Is it inherited frustration or inherited indecisiveness? Uh, is it inherited uh, panic? It's actually an inherited emotion of panic. So let's write this down here. Panic. And you got this either from your mom or dad. There's no other choices. Did you get it from your mom? No, it came from your dad. Okay. At conception, you got this energy from your dad. Now, did he get this from somebody earlier? Yes. So at conception, he got it from who? From his father? Yep, he got it from his father. So your father got it from your grandfather. Did he get it from somebody earlier? Yes. From his father? Yes. Okay, so there's three fathers there, your great-grandfather. Now, does this go back any further? Yes, it does. Uh, does it stay in the father's line? We see this pattern forming, three fathers. Does it stay in the father's line all the way? It does. How many generations does this go back total? Does it go back 10? Yes. Does it go back 20? No. 15? No. 14? No. 13? 12? 11? 10. It goes back 10 generations. So 10 generations, if we figure, uh, 10 times, if you figure roughly 20, maybe 23 years for a generation, minus 2017 comes out to about 1787. So around the time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, somebody had a bad day there. Who knows? <laughs> wow. So give wow. or take maybe 20 or 30 years. But now watch what happens, okay? And by the way, the fascinating thing about this is these – these ancestors, we believe, also are holding this energy. Now, there's a principle in quantum physics called non-locality. And non-locality says that one energy can exist in many places at one time. And that's what this is. This is kind of what we call a shared emotion. So this was shared down all those generations until finally it got to you. Do you have any kids, Meredith? No. No, okay. All right, so let's uh, let's release this before it goes any further. But what we find is that these ancestors also will often um, they every time they show up for the release of uh, the emotion because they're having something released from their body as well, right? So do we need to know any more about this? We don't. All right, here we go. Now to release an inherited emotion like this, we do ten swipes of the magnet. Now you can use any kind of a magnet. This is just a refrigerator magnet. Happens to be a fish tank. <laughs> Yeah, fish tank, any magnet works. In fact, if you don't have a magnet, don't fret. You can use your fingertips. They're also magnetic, okay? And you usually have those with you. So let's go ahead and do this. We do 10 swipes over the governing meridian of the body. And the governing meridian is just a, a channel that enables us to put magnetic energy into the whole acupuncture system. It's all connected. So there we go. So let's ask, did we release that inherited emotion 
of panic from you. Yes. Now, check this out. Did this also release from your father? Yes. And from his father? Yes. And from all those other fathers all the way back? Yes, it did. Now, think about something. If we go back 10 generations to 1787, give or take, right, to that grandfather of yours, how many descendants might have sprung and be connected to that man? Maybe yeah. quite a few. So when we release this one energy, it releases from everybody, wherever they are, right? And however many cousins and distant cousins might have actually gotten this from that man way back when. Now what I want you to do is just move your neck around a little bit back and forth and turn it around and let's see how it feels now. Yeah, yeah, it feels better, it does. Yeah, so can you put a number on it now compared to how it was before? Mm, like a, a one, I actually don't really notice it much. Okay, all right, awesome. So oh. that's basically how this works, it's pretty simple. We can do another one if you want to or... Do one more on Meredith. I, I'm, you know, she probably wouldn't bring this one up, but I'm going to, for her behalf, honestly. Uh, you know, every once in a while, she gets this Renaud's type of symptom, which we know is autoimmune, right? It's like, and, and I'm telling you, no one is more diligent than Meredith. And, and Meredith's health has transformed, I mean, you know, to her credit, because she does everything. However, you know, there's this little sticking point that I believe is a trapped emotion that is something to do with this Renaud's not fully recovering. So could you do that for her? Well, it could be. And in fact, what we just released may have been a big key for the Renauds because of course, you know, the nerves travel down the arms and so on. But uh, let's ask another question. Let's ask. And the beauty of the subconscious mind is we can ask it and it will tell us. So um, the, the, uh, the symptoms that you've had in the past with the Renauds, is there a trapped emotion that is contributing to those symptoms that we can release? And the subconscious mind says, yes, absolutely. There's, a, there's an emotion. So what's the emotion? Well, we go to our chart and uh, right away, we know that the subconscious mind, her subconscious mind has an emotion in mind. And now we have to play charades with her subconscious and figure out what it is. It's gotta be one of these. So is this emotion in column A? No, that's weak. So it's in column B. We just got rid of half the list. So uh, we have 30 emotions left out of 60. Is it in one of the odd rows in column B? No, so it's in an even row in column B. Is it in row two in column B, row four in column B? That leaves row six in column B. Is that where it is? Yes. So is the emotion pride? No. Is it shame? No. Shock? No. Is it unworthy? No. Uh, there's one left, worthless, is that it? No. So once again, what we're finding here, the subconscious has taken us to a column and a row. The answers are all negative, which means it's inherited. So, but the body won't give us, her subconscious won't give us the emotion uh, until we use that word inherited, because uh, it's a little different than a regular trapped emotion. So um, is this an inherited emotion of pride? Uh, is this an inherited emotion? Yes. Is it an inherited emotion of pride? Actually, that's what it is. Is it shame, inherited, inherited, shock, and worthy, worthless? No, it's, it's an inherited emotion of pride. Now, pride is, um, you, you typically might call this false pride. It's kind of a sense of hubris, you know, feeling better than somebody else. This is inherited, so this is not your fault, Merida. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Okay, so let's see where this came from. Um, this emotion of pride, did you get this from your mom at conception? No. So this came also from your dad. Did your dad get this from somebody earlier? Yes. From his dad? No. He got it from his mom. So father's mother. Did she get it from somebody earlier? Yes. From mother? Yep. So there's father's mother's mother. Did she get it from somebody earlier? Yes. From mother? No. From father. So this one's kind of jumping around a little bit. Did he get it from somebody earlier? No. So this one goes back four generations. Your father's mother's mother's father. Okay. So um, your second great grandfather. All right. Now, do we need to know any more about this emotion? No, we don't. But I, it wouldn't surprise me if when we release this, that the rest of your, um, your neck discomfort might disappear. Although I don't know. One of the things that we can do though, see, is we can ask where this energy is in your body, okay? Because remember, a trapped emotion is a ball of energy from about the size of a baseball to about the size of a cantaloupe. They'll lodge in the body and they'll usually stay where, you know, where they land. Um, but we can ask where this thing is. So let's ask, is this in your neck, this trapped emotion? No. 
Uh, is it in your head, in the skull area? No. Is it, if we draw a line down the middle of the body, we can ask, is this on the right side of your body, Meredith? No. Is it on the left side? Yes, actually on the left side. So um, is it in the left chest area? Yes, okay. Um, hmm, interesting. So we, and anything can cause anything. Is it more on the back of the body, more on the front of the body? Is it affecting the lung? Is it affecting the left breast? So it's affecting the lung and the left breast. So let's ask, um, hmm, do we need to know more about this? I don't think so. Now understand that when you have, um, first of all, what we, what we believe is that anything, and what we've observed literally is that anything can cause anything. And so, um, that's another nice thing about using this work is that we don't have to have preconceived ideas about what's going to cause what, whatever shows up, we fix. But, um, but this is affecting the left breast and the left lung. Now the connection with the Raynaud's, I don't know, but your body says this is part of that. So let's go ahead and release this. You ready? And we do 10 swipes. And then 10 swipes for generational and three for. Exactly. Yep. If it's just a regular trapped emotion that you picked up during your lifetime, even if it's in the womb or something like that, it's just three swipes. If you're working on somebody else, usually what we'll do is we'll have them, I'll have them stand with their back to me and I'll go down their, their spine. Yeah. The governing reading goes all the way down to the tailbone. But if you're just working on yourself, you can just go over like so. All right. So let's ask, do we release that emotion of pride? that inherited emotion of pride from you, yes, that it released from your father, yes, and his mother, yes, and her mother, yes, and, his, and her father, cleared from everybody. So now what I want you to do is, I don't know, maybe stand up and move around a little bit. So you release, um, for people that may not understand, a, a emotion in her by wiping the magnet down your head. Yeah, because I'm acting as proxy for her, so my subconscious has set aside its own needs, and I'm acting on, totally on her behalf. So I can ask questions, get answers on myself, clear things on myself, no problem. That's what our practitioners do. So, so Meredith, how's your neck, by the way? I'm just curious. You move that around, it was about a one. Did that change that at all? Mm, no, it didn't. So that's about a one still. It's better, but it's, it's about the same as the, the original um, okay. release. Okay. Now there, there may be more underlying reasons, you know, for the Renauds, but that your subconscious mind said, yeah, that was definitely one of the reasons. And that emotion was affecting the left breast and the, and the left lung, but it also was, you know, one of the reasons behind the Raynaud's. So exactly why, yeah, we don't always know. I mean, sometimes it's really obvious and the connections plain as day. Sometimes it's not, but that's okay. We just fix whatever shows up. Mm -hmm. hmm. Now, does it, it typically take a few times sometimes if you don't have kind of a, an initial dramatic reaction to get a result? Yeah, it can. Sure. I mean, uh, oftentimes, for example, like we got you from a three to a one with your neck. Um, sometimes reactions are instantly, uh, you know, they're, they're instantaneous and that's always really exciting. But, uh, you know, it can take some time. It's kind of like archaeology, right? <laughs> you know. To find the treasure, you might have to go back a few layers. Oh, now we're in the 1800s. Oh, now we're in the 1700s. Keep digging. Ah, there's the treasure. It's like you're releasing layers of things. And uh, the old expression, you know, is that uh, the body's like an onion. And it's true. You peel off layers. But the beautiful thing about it is as we get rid of our layers of emotional baggage, as we, as we cut ourselves loose from this stuff, we become closer and closer to the person that we were really intended to be in this world. See, we, we become much better instruments for the higher power uh, and we're, we become more capable of love and uh, it's just a wonderful thing. Life gets better as you start to get rid of all this junk because you can think of everybody that you know is dragging these suitcases of rocks, you know, consisting of all their emotional baggage. We drag that stuff through our lives so it misdirects us, and some of that, some of those rocks aren't even ours. Like in your case, both of these were inherited. Mm -hmm. Now, how common is that with the inherited issues versus just something more more recent? I would say probably on average for about every ten trapped emotions that we'll find on a person that was picked up in their life, we'll maybe find one or two that were inherited. But it kind of depends on the individual. Some people seem to be what you could call vessels of release for their ancestors. I mean, 
let me let me tell you a story. By the way, in fact, um, uh, my uh, my former executive assistant uh, Connie Barton uh, was one of our practitioners, and she still is. She's one of our full time staff practitioners now. She had a friend from Chicago who had this ability all of her life. She grew up with this girl, and uh, she always had the ability to see spirits. And so she came out from Chicago to visit Connie one day, and uh, and Connie said, "Look, you know, let's go downtown later, but I've got some sessions I need to do." some people I need to work on remotely. So just sit out here, read a magazine or something. I'll be with you in an hour or so. And her friend said, well, if it's okay with you, I'd like to sit in, in your room and just see what you're doing now. And so she did. And so when Connie got done working on these five or six people, her friend said, listen, I don't think you understand what's going on here. She said, here's what I saw. She said, when you would offer that prayer at the beginning, that silent prayer, have that moment of silence and you were praying for help for that person you're about to work on, she said, I would see spirits come in and stand behind you. And sometimes it was a couple, and one time it was five, but they all seemed to be connected with that person that you were working on, and they were very intently focused on helping you to help that person. And sometimes it was clear to me that they were relatives somehow, or ancestors, or unborn children, or whatever it might be, but that happened every single time, see? So, um, and th that's that's one of the reasons why we we stop and we ask for help because um, there's a whole unseen thing going on here. See that we uh, that we yeah. aren't necessarily aware of. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm telling you, it's like you know. I know if people watching this. We're gonna have two groups. People that are like, "Oh my God!" It's like you know, they just get it. They get the subconscious. They believe it. And then there's the other group that's like me, skeptical until you know, proven others. Look, I, I've had a lot of things, you know to say, okay, there, there's a lot to this thing, right? You know, it's like, just because I don't understand it necessarily doesn't mean it's not true. You right. know, but I, I encourage everyone watching, you know, be like me, you know, you know, dig deeper. Even if you say, ah, oh, that's same Toki, dig deeper, you know, tr you know, because I'm telling you, you know, th there's a quantum physics that we don't understand completely. You know, that's we right. keep, you know, like you were, you're talking about the heart, you know, it's, you know, just in recent science, you know, we're understanding the connection of the heart and the brain. You know, and when we say, gosh, it's just, you know, it's just, I, I just feel that in my heart. It's actually a scientific thing. We're realizing, you know, how that is connected into that subconscious. So that's new stuff. I mean, even the microbiome, this is new stuff. Epigenetics, new stuff, right? Yeah. You know, I, I, I think that science is really realizing that there's this, this energy that we don't realize. I don't was this your book or another one that I read? They talked about, they took a gentleman from World War II who was traumatized from kamikazes. And that was and, in our book, yeah. Was that and, your book? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amazing, right? I'll let, let, t tell that story very really quickly because, again, that, that really convinced me. I mean, yeah. so tell that story. Well, basically what happened was um, they took this man who survived the kamikaze attacks in World War II in the Pacific on the aircraft carriers, and uh, they put him into a room. They drew blood and uh, spun the blood down, took his white blood cells out, put him in another room in a Petri dish. So they were still alive. And then what they would do is they would record the electrical activity um, in his body, but also in the blood cells. And they would show him newsreels of the kamikazes attacking, and they'd observe his activity. And his activity matched and paralleled the electrical activity of his white cells in the other room. And then they actually drove the white cells in a truck about 15 miles away, did the experiment again a number of times, found that the same thing correlated. There's so much more going on that, that we don't realize. I mean, um, you know, for example, what they're finding now, and, and this is a uh, medical uh, science, is, is finding that people who went through the Holocaust and survived those horrific emotional experiences are now manifesting in the emotional and physical and mental health of their grandchildren. Oh, man. It's all about the genes. It's all about epigenetics. Uh, the trapped emotions, uh, you know, they trapped emotional energies as well as chemicals, right? They have the same kinds of effects. They can yep. turn on genes, turn off yep. genes. Yep. And uh, it's, it's really getting right down to the roots of, uh, of epigenetics and how we can make our genes function better and work better. It's, uh, it's actually really simple, but just having genes for a certain thing doesn't mean that's gonna happen to you, but it might. But if you get rid of the emotional baggage and you cleanse and get rid of all the chemical toxins in the body, you've got a really good chance of not manifesting that thing at all. Right? You know, every condition we look at and work at, it's a matter of getting the genes to turn off. I, I part of my three legged stool, certain genes get turned on. We have to turn them off. And the second leg of the stool is 
there's certain stressors that turned them on. Emotions is part of that, right? Trapped emotions. The third leg is we know that the microbiome is a very big part of that, right? And all these things work in together. This is how people sick, get sick, but this is also the solution. Hey, we've got to get him a November seminar. I want you to check your schedule. I'm not going to let you off the air because, you know, we have my seminar coming up in Atlanta. We have 300 and some doctors uh, that are, you know, coming in. Uh, the one in San Diego in November, uh, I would love to get you there because, you know, emotions is something that, you know, this is something that uh, everyone needs to address, uh, yeah, you know, for the absolutely. challenging people. So, yeah, Meredith, you're going to make sure you connect with him on the dates, but I, I know it's November 10, 11, 12. So, I, God willing, that works and we can get you there. So, absolutely. let's do yeah, it. Yeah, the best way to spread your work is through doctors, right? Because they're in touch with thousands. And, I, I said to the world needs, so do you, uh, you know, and putting, putting this together is really exciting. Yeah. Well, and, um, I'll, uh, I'll touch base with you when, when I've got time and I'm up in Salt Lake area and, uh, we'll go, uh, we'll go yeah. get lunch or something. Meredith, do you ever get out to park city? Yeah. I do, not as often as I'd like, but I, I do get out there often. I love Utah. So that would be really fun to connect. And, and I'll definitely send you information on the seminar. And, um, and thank you so much. Just uh, in, in closing, Dr., Dr., Dr. Brad, anything else you'd like to share with our audience or kind of a final take-home message for anybody watching? Well, you know, um, yeah, I would just say that, um, uh, you know, I, I just work here. This work came about because I was just asking constantly for help with my patients and I was obsessed with really getting to the roots of what was really going on with them. By um, the way, that's how everything I've come is the same route, no doubt. It all comes down through me because <laughs> I, I always say, how many ask, Lord, I am asking. <laughs> so, right. that's it. Exactly. <laughs> and that is such a beautiful thing, really. And I tell people, look, you probably tell people the same thing. I just work here, you know, and um, so go to emotioncodegift.com, download the book, listen to it, start uh, start reading it, and try this out because it really does work. It can seem so simple. And, you know, I've done, I've done seminars all over the world. And about every other seminar that I've taught, somebody will come up to me and they'll say, you know, this just seems to be too simple. And my response is always, well, I can make it more difficult for you if you'd like. <laughs> you <know? laughs> That's but awesome. Wow. We appreciate you. You know, I, I, hey, I, you know, off air, I want you to check in uh, my low back and see if there's any trapped emotions, but I don't want to uh, do that. You know, you, you showed uh, these yeah. folks what this is, and I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Thank uh, you. Thank you both. Yeah. Thank you, Daniel, also. Yeah, he's uh, here. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay, great. Well, let's do it again. We'll talk soon. Yeah. All right. We'll be in touch. Thanks. Everybody for uh, for being here for sharing. Thank you, Dr. Nelson, for working on me too. I, I really appreciate that. I'll keep you posted on on what happens. But uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Let us know what you think if you're doing the emotion code and how it's worked for you. And um, we will talk soon. So have a great weekend, everybody, and we'll uh, talk to you later. Bye bye.